Hello everyone, my name is Anders Nilsson and welcome to this webinar where we will cover some tips and best practices around running large load tests on LearnerCloud. Cloud. As you all know, LearnerCloud Cloud is a tool under constant development and as such the product management would very much like to hear any ideas for improvement from our users. So if you do have an ID or an enhancement request for LearnerCloud, Cloud, please make use of the ID exchange and the product management team for Learner Cloud will then take those IDs into consideration. Here's a quite common scenario actually. A big business peak is coming up soon, and with that, some testing is required to make sure that everything will go smoothly. Big testing finished yesterday. So, what do you do? You gain access to a powerful performance testing tool like Learner Cloud a few days in advance, and you set up your big test, and you're ready to go. But, hang on a minute, to run a large test do come with some additional considerations that will need to be taken care of in order to run a successful test. Because it is very easy to make assumptions around how the load testing operation works, especially if you've used other performance testing tools in the past. So let's say that you want to test your application from cloud locations around the world, which is a very great idea. So, this might sound like an obvious tip, but you would be surprised at how many times that people suddenly discover that their application under test simply isn't accessible from the internet. So, driving load to it from AWS or from Azure just wasn't possible. Or if you now are able to drive load from the cloud, but your 250,000 Vata users are only seen as coming from 100 different IP address sets, meaning that the load balancer directs them all to more or less the same node, leaving the rest of the application nodes untouched, thus skewing the results. Again, not an unheard of scenario. But that's why we're here today, to talk a little bit about all those little gotchas that while they are easy to solve in advance, and if you have the time for it, but they can also be easy to forget when you are in a hurry to setting up your big test. So, first of all, what is considered a big test? Well, that can vary quite a lot from customer to customer, actually. Because some, some run very large tests on a regular basis and they aren't thinking much of it. Then other customers usually run very small tests. So, to them, a large test could be considered anything outside of their own comfort zone. But let's say if you are planning a test that you feel might be outside of what you normally would be comfortable with running, please get in contact with us and our support and discuss your plans and we will do our best to make sure that it all goes smooth so that in the future large tests are then within your comfort zone. But if we are to put a number on exactly what a large test would entail, we do have a limit in the system that if you try to run a test that is larger than 200,000 Vata users, you will get this warning saying that the maximum number of web Vata users cannot exceed 200,000 Vata users. Please contact us to run this test. So that would then be the first restriction that would have to be removed. But it is a restriction that is there for a reason. And that is simply as a protection for most of our customers who might never run tests of that size. And yet it would be very easy for one of the end users to make a human mistake and configure their test to run with, uh, let's say, 500,000 Vata users instead of 5,000 Vata users. And such a mistake might actually consume all of the Vata user hours that the customer has purchased. So while maybe not for the good of all mankind, but at least for the majority of, of the tenants, this restriction provides a good protection from such mistakes. Now, if you are looking to run your test utilizing load generators in the cloud, either on AWS or on Azure, then as mentioned previously, you would be surprised at how common this is to forget to verify the connection to the application or test, uh, not only from one of the locations, but from all of the different locations and the different regions that are to be used in the test. Because if, and if the connection isn't there, it needs to be set up. And that often makes use of dedicated IP addresses. And you will need one for each of the cloud load generators. 
which also would need to be arranged in advance by contacting our support team. Then, basically, which with each cloud load generator having their own dedicated IP address, then any firewall in between the cloud load generator and the application run test can then be configured to allow the traffic in from the load generator. So, how do you know how many dedicated IP addresses will be needed? And also, of course, how many cloud-based load generators will be used for your test? Well, Lonar Cloud automatically selects the required number by making a calculation based on a fixed number of other users that a generic script of the selected protocol can run on one load generator, which, for example, is uh, set to 2,500 other users for the web HTTP protocol. So running a uh, test using 2 million web data users would then in theory require 800 cloud load generators. But that will also have to be verified since you don't want to start a large test that uses hundreds of cloud load generators and then realize that the number of data users per cloud load generator is too high. And by too high I mean that the cloud load generators run into resource issues and starts generating load generator alerts. And I will return to load generator alerts later on. So while the theoretical number is set to 2,500 other users, in reality, that might be a little less or a lot less, depending on everything from the complexity of the scripts and the selected think times and pacing for the scripts as well. So the only way to confirm this is by doing a load generator sizing exercise. That basically means that you set up and configure your test as you intend to run it, with all the scripts and their runtime settings, and you start running it one on one load generator. And then you slowly build up the load while observing the resources of the load generator until you start hitting around 80 to 85% utilization. And if you then stay on that level of load and it all continues to be stable and you're not getting any load generators alerts, then you know how many vector users you can safely run on one load generator. And then also by extrapolation, how many load generators you will need for your test. And again, I will return to this topic later on, but if you do have the need of dedicated IP addresses for your cloud load generators, now you know how many you need. And please also keep in mind that to make sure that you also are entitled for the required IP address capacity. Now you know how many cloud load generators will be used, and you've applied for dedicated IP addresses for them all. But will that be enough though? I highly recommend that you check if there are any limits with the number of data users that can load the system from a single IP address. That also is depending on what type of load balancing solution is being used in front of the application on test. It might be that more IP addresses are needed to be added to the IP address pool, so that when your virtual users are knocking on the door of your application on a test, they will then come from a bigger pool of origins and will hopefully be more equally distributed in the system and will reflect your upcoming production load more closely. But by default, if you enable IP spoofing or multiple IP addresses for your testing on a cloud, each load generator can have up to 15 IP addresses and a total of 300 IP addresses for the whole test. And this is of course depending on what is actually available from the cloud provider for the selected region. The 15 IP addresses per load generator is a limitation with the cloud providers, but the 300 IP addresses per test is a default limitation in Lonar Cloud and that can be modified if required after a discussion with our operations teams for special types of scenarios. So if you plan on running a really large test that will make use of a very large number of cloud load generators, then we highly recommend that the plan should be to split the load and the dedicated IP addresses between multiple cloud regions, because it might not be that the cloud provider actually has all of this required infrastructure available in a single region. So the recommendation is to plan a split of the load in advance, simply to increase the success rate in getting all the required infrastructure successfully provided. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the way to figure out 
how many vector uses you can run on a load generator in order to figure out how many load generators you will need by doing is by doing a load generator sizing exercise. And doing this exercise will also make sure that you avoid getting any load generator alerts later on when you are running the full test. And for those who don't know, and a load generator alert primarily happens when there are not enough system resources, such as a CPU or memory available on the load generator, which, when it gets really bad, can actually skew the results of a test, since the load generator machine hasn't got enough available system resources to run the load generator agent software. So to make sure that you don't get any alerts, you can either do this for the whole test or for a specific script, but you normally set it up as you intend to run it, with the same random settings as in your planned test on a single load generator. For the web HTTP protocol, the default maximum of vector users per load generator is 2500 vector users. And if you can run that amount of vector users on the single load generator without any load, load generator alerts for a good duration, then all is good. But if you start seeing alerts, then you need to rerun the test with fewer vector users, let's say 2000 vector users. And then once you find the maximum amount that can safely be executed per load generator, then it is possible to reduce the amount of vector users per cloud generator for your project by opening a support ticket and provide this requested new maximum. But please be aware that doing so can affect the virtual user and virtual user hour license consumption ratio. So please be sure to review the service description before your request has been implemented. But when it comes to load generator alerts, the number of beta users running on each load generator, that's not always the only reason for seeing the system resources being chewed up. It can also be from how the test itself has been configured. Generally, if the test has a number of different scripts, try to isolate the specific scripts that are or might be causing the load generator alerts and focusing on optimizing them. In general, the, the main reason for a script consuming too many resources are that they are running either with no think times in the script or with no or very short pacing, which is then the pause between iterations. Now, think time and pacing are what you normally would configure to make sure that you hit your transactions per second targets, and also making sure that the vector users do emulate your real-world users, and you usually need to do those calculations. Since if you, if you would run your vector users without any think times or pacing at all, they would then run unfettered and only be limited by the speed of the machine on which the load generator agent is running, and that's well, that's bad, pra bad practice, and will usually result result in load generator alerts. Another common reason, if the alerts are occur occurring primarily during the ramp up of the load, is that the ramp up pace is uh, way too quick. So by decreasing the ramp up pace or extending the ramp up duration. Not only would you hopefully get rid of the load generator alerts, but it will also provide a longer ramp up period, which can allow you to more easily pinpoint and troubleshoot any bottlenecks that occur during the ramp up phase. Because if you do ramp up too quickly, it's easy to miss exactly at what level of load that the bottlenecks started to happen. And it would then be hard to isolate exactly what happened in the system during that time. Yet another way to deal with any load generator alerts is to have a look at the scripts themselves. So I mentioned think times and pacing earlier, but if your scripts aren't containing any think, times, any think time function calls, then increasing them won't help. So you have to have a look at the scripts and add think times calls between the transactions where suitable, of course. And also in addition to that, by setting the think time to 10 seconds, that also comes with the benefit that they will be easy to modify in the runtime settings, since you can then there define the actual think time using percentages of the recording one. There are also a couple of other script optimization tips, which are a little bit too specific or too technical to cover in the slide deck here today, but they are all available in the online help in the ADM Help Center 
which then also contains uh, quite a few other tips and tricks for what I've been covering here today so far. When it comes to starting a very large test, it would be wise to make a decision beforehand around what is an acceptable margin of failure during the provisioning of the Vata users when starting the test. And by default, Learner Cloud will start the test if at least 95% of the Vata users have successfully been provisioned. But if you are running, let's say, a couple of million Vata users, you might be okay with if only 90% of them are successfully provisioned, simply due to the number of resources involved in the test. And this is a tolerance policy that can be customized, again, by opening a support ticket. And of course, the opposite is also possible, that if you, for example, would require that 100% of the better users to be successful. Then once the test is up and running, there is now also the option available to restart any better users that failed while running, which when running such large numbers can be a quite a common occurrence. And they can either be restarted all at once, or they can be added to the running test as per the previously defined ramp up pace for this script. And one of the last items I'll mention here today is simply do not forget to let everyone know that you are planning to run a large load test. Because again, there can be repercussions in areas that you don't even think about or perhaps doesn't even know about. At minimum, all silo experts plus network, proxy and firewall teams must know about your plans. There, there might be something somewhere that accepts the traffic while you're running your smoke tests. But when the large test is then started, some component might block the traffic for different reasons. Sure, I mean, to find those areas could be considered as a part of the reasons for the test. But if you could clear the way as much as possible in advance, then you'll get more out of your large load test. So if we are to quickly summarize everything that we've talked about here today, so Two of the more important ones are to verify the access to the application on a test from the cloud and to also remove the 200,000 data users limit. We talked about how to find the number of needed load generators, which then also provides you with how many dedicated IP addresses you will need, or and even more, if you are to use multiple IP addresses for your test, which you might then need to split between different cloud regions if you require very large numbers of cloud resources. Then, in order to avoid load generator alerts during the test, we can tweak the number of other users per load generator. Uh, we can make sure that we set think times and pacing correctly for our scripts, and to also make sure that we do not ramp up too quickly. Then the final items were that it is possible to tweak the provisioning tolerance of the Vata users and that it is also possible to restart any Vata users that are failing during the test. And with the final one, to let people know what you are up to, then all of this will make sure that you can run a successful large load test using Load on a Cloud. And with that, I thank you for your time here today, and I hope that this was useful for you. Thank you.